trying to remember if I ever recorded this one. This is Lexington Avenue, 53rd Street in Midtown. I know I photographed it, but I don't remember ever including it on this YouTube channel. And I have been uh, undeniably neglecting of this channel lately, but what can you do? Life throws you a lot to do sometimes. Surprising new girlfriend situation, and the job is the job. And I'm also working on a documentary with uh, somebody about about prey. And all through this, I'm questioning my direction in life, but that's nothing new. What's the number of this phone? Two one two three zero eight. 2609, and I'm pretty sure that's on listed on my website somewhere. This one has some nice trumpet music to back it up. So I'm back at the Trump Tower. Let's, uh, Let's check in on the alleged telephones, plural, which we already know where this is going. There is one remaining. An old Verizon that, uh, Verizon doesn't take care of it anymore, but the Trump Tower people do. Yeah, this thing has been covered with graffiti and stickers and stuff, but it's the Trump Tower peeps that are, that are uh, taking care of it. What's the number in here? But anyway, it's making me do that anyway. Because Alhana is still supporting anybody. And this is hardly the first time I've checked in on this one, but this is actually part of my helping out the the Prey documentary because um, I'm not sure what the hell that says um, but I'm looking for evidence of Prey on any of these Midtown phones but I do not think I'm going to find it that's some kind of scratch but it looks more like Dave than Prey <laughs> I had the, the documentary guys, they came over to my place a few weeks ago, they totally took over, had their cameras and mics everywhere, I didn't really expect that, but they were very professional, By the, when they left it was as if they, were, they had not been there at all, they left no trace, no trace of their existence except some paperwork. This thing's got some scratches on it, but... I don't think any of it is prey. Yeah, I was not optimistic, but I thought I'd check on the upstairs public space at Trump Tower, which has been closed since COVID. It does kind of sting me because that was one of my favorite places in New York. And it is required to be open, but there doesn't seem to be any way to make them do it. It's a nice, it was, I mean, it's not like a really nice space, but it was open. It was generally pretty quiet. Most of the tourists, some of the most intrepid tourists ever made their way all the way up to the, to the garden level. And to call it the garden level, I mean, it feels about as much like a garden as if you just put a couple of a couple of plants in your kitchen. It's about as much like a garden as it feels. But I did a lot of writing up there, and it was it was my favorite place, or one of my favorite places in New York. But I don't think it's ever coming back. I'm 
this embargo moment, I might as well spy on the place just to see if this strange payphone piece is still on exhibit. They lifted this out of the Titan Street Art exhibit put together by Bree Zucker. And this is, they gave put it here with no explanation and no anything really. You're just, uh. Yeah, my focus is great here. You're just supposed to know why this phone is here. contacted me absolutely out of the blue 33 years after our uh, our time together ended back in 1991 and then as now everything is exactly the same we always hit it off there's always something to talk about every single night we hit on something new or could be revisited it doesn't matter there's always something it was always like that it's enough to make you ask well what what would be different about our lives if we had not pushed each other away all those years ago when both of us had very poor relationship skills If there's any prey on here, it's covered up by the by the stickers. I've given up hope on this phone ever working again. Uh, I've, uh, I've obviously been in that camp before, but I think now we're talking five or six months of no dial tone. And by the way, my, my uh, friend Jordan, who did the Talk To Me project, that was the payphone project where he set up some a, a phone in each of the five boroughs. And if you picked one of them up, all the others would ring. And if you got lucky, someone would answer and you'd have a random conversation with a, with a person who picks up a ringing payphone. <laughs> uh, there was... One of the locations that I found was in the Bronx on Fordham Road at Webster Avenue, and PTS came along. We don't know when, but within the last few months, PTS came along and just wiped it out. They sent, they took it away. They sent it off to scrap, uh, apparently unaware that the phone had been put to put to use as this uh, as this art project. I know that PTS was aware of that project happening. I guess they just weren't aware that that particular phone was a part of it. So it's gone, and it's not coming back. It remains to be seen when that happens to this one. This had been this had been my trusty number one Midtown <laughs> payphone for a long, long time, but things got to end sometime. It's been dead a lot longer than that last one. Yeah, and this one's never coming back. And I'm going to see if I can catch that train.
that's the state of the old hotel Pennsylvania as of uh, as of now it's been like looked like this for a few months now I think needless to say the payphones did not survive <laughs> this place also had a couple of janky old um, combination telephone payphone and fax machines sort of things you would see mostly at airports and convention centers these things were look, looked horrible but uh, this is where this might have been the biggest collection of payphones under one roof in New York until they tore this building down now I think that dubious distinction probably goes to the Whitehall Staten Island Ferry Terminal that probably has the most phones under one roof but I don't think any of them work This is the approach to where there used to be as many as a dozen still working phones that were hung on to the bitter end, but all the phones that used to be in this area are gone. These are the phones that I used a lot back in the early 90s, so they actually meant something to me. But they've mostly been replaced by digital signage like this. I wonder if I've done this already. If you can see any trace of the old films. No, this is where they used to be, but they cleaned up after themselves. Same here, I think there used to be two of them. But a lot of them, and I'm sure I've visited this, this before, a lot of the spots where payphones used to be remain like this. There's metal, uh, metal sheets that cover up the space where the phone used to be. And typically you'll find some kind of emergency phone like this. Sometimes it's a handset, other times it's one of these things where everybody in the vicinity gets to hear what you are calling about. But throughout Penn Station, you'll see rows and rows of these metal sheets. And that's where you know there used to be a ton of payphones. <laughs> I don't have any quarters on me today, but a friend of mine was here recently. I think last Sunday. You can hear this one still has dial tone. Um, but the problem with this one remains that it does not take coins. It just spits them back out into the coin return slot. Uh, I sent PTS a note about this, but they don't seem to care anymore. So you can use it to dial toll-free numbers or star 10 still gets you to the dial pair. Yeah. That one connects you to a live person. I don't really need that. I used to like listening to the pre-recorded sermons that they had on that line, but they don't, you can't seem to find that anymore. Uh, but anyway, no trace of prey here, but you do see further evidence of the the metal sheets where the phones used to be. Now, prey has sort of come back into my life because of this documentary and also because um, there had been talk of that there had that there was a photo of her that it was taken by uh, one of the the street writers. In fact, it was taken by one of his. I don't know, there's some drama involved. Apparently the photo was actually taken by an ex-girlfriend of his, or a woman who later became an ex-girlfriend. So there was just some, some, some uh, silly drama that prevented it from becoming better known. But uh, if I can still manage to do this, I will insert the only known photo of Prey into this, uh, into this video right now and just take a look at it for a while because... If she means anything to you, like 
as she meant as she has meant to me over the years it's kind of a miracle to actually put a face to the name put a face to the legend and you see how her thumb and finger are darkened and that would be evidence of of the metal scratching off onto her as she did her work started talking again we I don't know if this is inevitable but it just seemed to make sense in the conversation that we would sort of compare notes about what we had where we had been all, all this time and she'd been with one guy for nine years another guy for ten years and then I think a total of six or seven guys after after we parted in 91, 92. And I, I, the longest thing I've been in was about three years. And I don't like to call it a body count because I think that's pretty tasteless, but you know, we were, we were just talking about the different types of people we've been with and I just kept coming up with one after another and she just started like making a uh, ringing a bell every time I mentioned a new a new past dalliance or attempted a serious encounter or whatever and I said that's what do you expect you were with guys for nine and ten years I was with girls for six and seven months for the most part <laughs> if that long We still have a lot to talk about. There just isn't a lot of time because I work full time and at the moment she does not. 
but she's had two full careers and she's just taken some well-deserved time off. That 14th Street phone will always be legend to me, I guess. That's the last payphone I used to make an actual payphone radio call. It was one of the ones I posted to YouTube, not, not to, uh, I didn't add it to the radio stream. And I did imagine I'd be able to use that one regularly because the station is on my way home to and from work. imagine stopping in every once in a while just to leave some comments on my fascinating day, but it wasn't to be.